the topic uh, today i am going to talk about uh, disease ppr in sheep and goat in overview and especially on the control and eradication strategic plan applied in the country so as most of the veterinarian knows there is the goat plague or plague of small ruminant it is a pestidus petits ruminants from french word it is a major disastrous diseases of small ruminant it is the notifiable diseases as per the world organizations for animal health so it is a acute case is highly contagious disease economically important disease associated with high morbidity as well as the high mortality the clinical in acute case is characterized by the high fever that is a pyrexia oclo nasal discharges from the orifices and then oral ulcer erotic stomatitis some cases enteritis and diarrhea and pneumonia followed by either death of the animal or recovery of the animal depend upon the immune status of the animal it will be affected so if you are seeing that uh, the small ruminant are risk for the ppr if you are uh, in the world scenario amount uh, around 62.5% uh, population are at the risk out of 1.7 billion population of sheep and goat present in the africa middle east and asia if you are seeing the indian contest so it is approximately 225 million small ruminant that is approximately 75 million goat sheep as well as the 150 million uh, goats are uh, as per the 20th livestock census it is risk our country so it is the main concern improving the productivity of the small ruminant in the region where it is endemic the causative agent is a Uh, negative sense single stranded rna virus belong to the genus morbilly virus also known as uh, ppr virus formally now this is renamed as small ruminant morbilly virus when you are seeing that it is prevalent only the single zero type virus is prevalent in the world so uh, among the single virus there are four lineage lineage 1 2 and 3 as well as 4 so it is based on the fusion uh, and nucleocapsid gene or sequence of the ppr virus as per india is concerned so far only the lineage 4 in otherwise known as it is asian lineage only prevalent in our country if you are seeing the distribution of disease in the globe the first the ppr was recognized as a goat disease uh, during 2009 42 in ivory coast that is western africa so after that it was spread to the sudan from 1973 then uh, if you are seeing the indian uh, subcontinent in 1987 the first report was reported from the southern part of the uh, country that is tamil nadu in arasur village from uh, vilupuram district from the china it was reported 2007 that is uh, reported so we will be coming only discussing on the status of the disease in indian context so first report as i told you already 1987 from the southern part till 1993 uh, the disease were uh, constrained only to the restricted to the southern part of the india including uh, telangana andhra pradesh and karnataka during 1994 it was reported from maharashtra and up to 2010 uh, from 94 onwards that uh, northern part of the country so up to 2010 it was restricted to only the north and uh, east part from 2010 onwards the disease was reported from the northeast part so these are the status now the all over the country in different part of the states also reporting the disease this is a totally endemic country so based on this endemic situation the government of india initiated the ppr control program during 2010 and selected only the southern part of the countries that is covering the uh, four major the states in the southern part including the union territories these are the states and uh, union territory covered in the first phase and uh, using the mass vaccination strategic program so in the during the second phase of the ppr program based on the impact of the vaccination and uh, effect of the uh, disease control uh, and taken place so the government of india again uh, extended the program to all over the country that's why it was started 14 to 15 with the support financial support from both state as well as central so if you are seeing the economic impact of the ppr this major because it is very economic important because it causes morbidity 50 to 100% as a mortality is 10 to 100% that is why it is a very economically important disease 
And generally, the sheep and goats are significant contributor to the next economy through meat, milk, hides, fiber, etc. So this is the foremost important diseases, viral disease in India with serious social economical implication. So presence of disease will generally will affect the trade and export, import of new breeds, development of intensive livestock production, etc. So based on the assessment, some of the assumption and calculation, different authors have reported different loss. So latest one we have estimated from our Nibedi is around 1,600 crores at the 10% incident level reported. So generally on an average 400 million Indian rupees per year losses, actually that is the minimum losses. We are okay. So this initiated the immediate step uh, required for the control and eradication of the diseases from the country. So coming to the clinical science, very easily you can identify it by the veterinarian three syndrome, that is a 3D symptom, that is uh, dehydration, diarrhea, and death. So you can, if you are having this three, three symptom in the form, we can easily suspect the cases. So initially, if you are seeing the plot, uh, some of the animal, from the away from the plot. Actually, that is having the eye fever and it will be anorexia of it. So it will be separate. So that is the indication for the veterinarian or you can ask the history from the farmers from the, so any animal is away from that. So that is the first animal affected in the farm. So plot, then they may have the symptom of nasal discharges as well as ocular discharges, conjunctivitis, oral ulcers, necrotizing and erotic somatitis from the period from three to seven days. And nodal lesion also after the seven days, 12 days it will go. So the major peak of disease will be there seven to 12 days. So suppose the animal is survived from 12 days from the onset of the symptom. So it may be recovered. That's why I told you in my present days, either recovery or death of the animal. So you can see, veterinarian can see the situation in the field. You can give the prognosis to the farmer, whether they can sell the animal or uh, uh, in the distress sale, or they have to wait for the recovery or undergo the treatment. So based on the situation, they have to uh, take all that. So if you are seeing that uh, uh, diary also will be there and in uh, followed by the pneumonia because of the secondary bacterial infection. These are the uh, main uh, symptom for uh, uh, PPR. In case of post-mortem disease cases, you can observe the zebra marking and uh, consolidated uh, lungs and uh, enlargement of the lymph node in the intestine. So if you are seeing the transmission, generally the virus will secrete it through uh, ocular nasal discharge or oral secretion and uh, in contact uh, direct method or indirect method. So close contact and a droplet infection is the main causes. So source of the virus, if you are seeing that virus present in all the secretion, it is the play a major role, including the feces. So trade in the small room in India, especially in the local market and festival, season, the, all the animal, infected animal from one uh, village uh, will come to the common place. So it will, uh, there is a lot of chance for spreading of infection to the other places because the farmer bring the animal to the local market and uh, if not able to sell the animal during that time, again, they will take back to the, their original farm. So that is the major ca root cause in the country. So generally no involvement of the vector is uh, there in this uh, transmission of the disease and no carrier status. However, some uh, reports are showing that virus infected animal can secrete the virus more than 36 days of infection. That is the maximum one through their excretion. Coming to the pathogenesis, the viral will generally will set to the ocular nasal discharges and saliva and feces. So from that, it will be getting either direct or contact method and virus localized in the tonsils and pharyngeal lymph nodes for the minimum incubation period of four to six days. From that, it will be go to viremia, then localized in the lymphatic tissues and subsequently respiratory and gastrointestinal uh, mucosa will be affected. So you'll be getting the respiratory and gastrointestinal uh, related ailment uh, during the infection. So virus multiplication in the gastrointestinal tract produces mucosal erosion. That's why lesion will appear in the oral cavity as well as in the intestine and the stomach, uh, stomatitis also and followed by the diarrhea. So that will be the dehydration initially because off feed animal will go for off feed, then followed by the diarrhea, and then uh, the death will be happened. So this is the sequence you will be getting in the uh, any uh, outbreak investigation, in particular infected flocks.
replication of the lymphoid tissue lead to lymphopenia secondary bacterial pneumonia that is the reason you are getting the pneumonia in that case nivedia is uh, national institute of uh, veterinary epidemiology and disease informatics uh, from icr uh, institution we have the national animal disease referral expert system in this we have the database for the all the, all the outbreaks of uh, economical important diseases in the country so as a re with related to ppr outbreaks uh, we have the data from 1995 from uh, 25 states in six zones of the country till uh, now 2019 we have analyzed so this is the based on the analysis uh, we are this is a primarily affect the sheep and goat disease and uh, no detailed role of uh, wild animal we have not studied in the case of uh, in our country and breed detail also not available but generally the occurrence of ppr associated with the age of the animal that is younger animal below 1 years of age are more susceptible than the aged animal it is the one of the major top 10 diseases uh, reported in small ruminant this is the primarily important diseases for the sheep and goat so highest reported disease in our country if you are seeing the disease burden so 36% of the mortality among the sheep and goat is report uh, due to ppr followed by the blue tongue and other diseases in small percentage when you are analyzing the data for the last uh, 25 years uh, the temporal analysis that is time series data so you can see that from 1995 to 1999 so the initially that uh, peak was from uh, 2003 to 2007 this may be due to the availability of the diagnostic kits that time uh, 2002 dr r p singh and their group has uh, developed the elisa kit for diagnosis of the ppr so that uh, more case we are able to uh, uh, detect from the field that is maybe the reason so once uh, after that implementation of the vaccination from again 2002 the uh, report of the outbreak is uh, in decline so these are the status if you are seeing the spatial analysis that is place and uh, so this is the endemicity of the ppr in india uh, last uh, two decades so 1995 to 92 you see the how the endemic nature of the disease every time the outbreak are reported from different part of the country from the last five years after implementation of the vaccination 2010 so you can see the very clearly that uh, red color become normal in case of the southern part because these are the state they are under the under vaccination program especially karnataka telangana and andhra pradesh uh, that are the endemic spot during before 2010 after implementation uh, this is the control the disease to the some extent and uh, you can see after the 2016 19 only the few district in the country are reporting the outbreaks uh, that is outbreak happening this is the status of uh, disease in 2019 only 16 states and uh, confined to only few districts and if you are seeing again a uh, 2020 the status uh, this is again uh, only few district around the uh, 22 states uh, because of the covid uh, they are not uh, vac stopped vac vaccination and again uh, that flare up the outbreak number especially in maharashtra it is started in jharkhand and west bengal there are the hot spot Uh, goat from uh, eastern part of the country is affected uh, more number compared to other part if sheep is from southern part so most of the other things are uh, it's normal uh, distribution except the southern part because this may be due to the virus adaptation that is southern states they have the large sheep and goat pop sheep population compared to north uh, north so the adaptation of virus may be circulating in the uh, particular species even though they are adaptable to the disease that variation due to the population or density of the small ruminant prevalent in that particular region so if you are uh, seeing the state wise proportion of the cumulative ppr report you can see that from initially you see first uh, 1995 to 2010 andhra pradesh telangana and haryana all the highest peak himachal pradesh so after that implementation vaccination again that uh, shifting the disease in the different region jharkhand west bengal they are at top uh, and including corona it is coming kerala kerala in 2015 so similarly if you are seeing the situation during uh, last 5 years again haryana is picked up kerala is picked up so this is mainly due to the irregular vaccination of the population that is the major because every 3 years even if you are vaccinated population it will go up 
because of dynamic population of sheep and goat. Every year, one third of the population is uh, replaced with the new young population. If you are waiting for three years, the whole vaccinated population will go up. That's why the case will be coming presently. If you are seeing the seasonal distribution, we have to be very careful that uh, as per the report, even though our, we are getting regular PPR outbreak throughout the country in all the seasons, but the maximum peak of uh, outbreak happening during January, February and March. So this time, the, because of the uh, migration of the population is restricted due to cold winter, maybe the availability of the fodders in the particular season in some region. So the animal will be huddled together. So that there is a spread of the infection and the movement of the animal climate factor also we were favoring the spread of the disease and uh, because the virus is so fragile but uh, during the winter season the survival is favorable condition and because of uh, contact like COVID nearby animal is there it will be contacting animal so that spread will be more that's the reason we are there. So again the practice of animal husbandry agroclimatic condition geographical location varies. So most of the investigation have linked the you see, PPR outbreak with the introduction of new animal to the plant. As I had discussed that during the market, that is the sandy, people will purchase the animal from other farmers. And again, there is the, that is the local market is the big, big, biggest source of the infection. So they will buy and they will mix into the uh, existing plant. That should not be done. Once you are buying that, you have to be quarantined for uh, three weeks to four weeks and you have to be vaccinated if not having the history, then you have to allow to mingle with the existing so that we can prevent the infection. So based on the analysis, we have observed that uh, PPR risk area showed a wide variation in the different zone at a different period. That's why the risk area is varies. And however, implementation of the control program uh, helped to control the disease in Karnataka state, Andhra Pradesh, as well as in Telangana uh, from uh, 2011 to 19. They are reporting only sporadic outbreak, only less than uh, 10 outbreaks uh, in the one year. So especially during 2018 and 19. So control program regularly non-implemented state like West Bengal, Jharkhand, uh, they are having the highest outbreak. Now the Maharashtra also started and Kerala they are getting frequently number of the outbreaks. So the introduction of new animal is the unknown source so that from the is the major risk factor. So you have to take appropriate biosecurity advisory measures to prevent the disease. You have to give to the farmers. This is the major uh, important advice we advisory. Uh, you have to veterinarians give to the farmer and especially taking the importance of the young animal that is six month to one year old animal newborn animal that is uh, vulnerable to the infection because once uh, that immunity passive immunity is vanished after four months of born so it is very vulnerable so the, our government of india is facilitating the vaccination after the four months so we'll be taking care of that and uh, disease occur throughout the india but uh, i told you january and is the maximum period the prevalent status before the vaccination uh, initiation that is 2011 one third of the population having the uh, zero prevalence rate. After implementation of vaccination, uh, so that uh, prevalence uh, variation we observed starting from uh, around uh, 30, 25 to 40 percent and uh, different species also having the PPR uh, positive, zero positive. So other animal example, uh, cattle, buffalo, they are having the immunity, but they are not able to show the clinical signs uh, except to sheep and goat as of now. So coming to the diagnosis, uh, there, there are important elements in disease diagnosis. One is less time consuming, very important. That is the rapid diagnosis is need of our simple and easy to perform. It should be easy to perform with high sensitivity and specificity, suitable for mass mock scale sampling testing because we are going for the eradication or control strategy. We have to go for zero monitoring, zero surveillance for that. Uh, mass screening of sample is must and it should be accepted with internationally because then only the OE and they will uh, World Organization for Animal Health, they will give the clearance so that is freedom from disease in future. So standardized test we have to use. Easy availability of the reagent because as of now only IVRA Muktesh were producing the diagnostic kits and uh, diagnosis micro scale level, high therapeutic is required to expand the supply of the kit. 
So these are the user friendly. These are the normal uh, elements in the disease uh, diagnosis required. So when you are seeing the sample to be collected from the PPR diagnostics, uh, they have to send farmers, uh, veterinarian, they have to collect from the farmer and they have to send to the laboratory. For that, uh, for anti-mortem animal, because at a point of time during the outbreak investigation, uh, that uh, two type of sample will be getting. One may be the death, I told you, triple D. Post-mortem sample, if it is animal died, you have to take from mesenteric lymph node, spleen, lung, and section of uh, some of the ileum and large intestine. So, uh, because both has to be collected, including serum sample, because we this will give the clue to the uh, uh, veterinarian for uh, what are the stages of infection in that form. So, anti-mortem sample, that is a blood in uh, EDTA, anticoagulant, clotted blood or serum, and swabs from uh, nasal orifice, oral and lacrimal, as well as the fecal sample. So, this will help you. Uh, sending all the sample has to be sent to the reference laboratory or uh, local uh, disease diagnostic uh, state level laboratory. You can send for the uh, under the refrigeration only, only with the ice pack, no uh, glycerol like FMD. Okay, if you are seeing the clinical uh, diagnosis, one is based on the clinical science, that is a tentative diagnosis, followed by PM lesion, and uh, otherwise detection of antigen or detection of uh, antibody or detection of nucleic acid, that is the virus. So as of the different type of uh, tests are available, we are self-sufficient uh, to have the diagnostic without uh, import of the in international kits. So time, time being, we are having detection of PPRV virus antigen, monoclonal antibody based sandwich ELISA from IVRI. Recently, our laboratory in Ivedi also, we have developed a recombinant based antigen capture ELISA. Similarly, H-gene antibody based competitive ELISA for detection of antibody available. And again, Nivedi made antigen gene antibody based detection as per required for the zero surveillance monitoring purposes to declare the free from diseases from the country. Because we have in the last eradication stage, we have to screen the sample. Even a single animal should not have the antibody against the PPRV virus, followed by this sample will be tested in VNT to declare freedom from diseases. Apart from that, uh, the, the PCR technique will available in the referral laboratory, RT-PCR, that is reverse transcription, PCR and PCR ELISA for the very rare sample and uh, not in a good condition sample we can subject. So, and uh, multiplex RT PCR and LAMP assay. So, many assays will be developed in uh, both the referent laboratory. As per uh, India's concern, uh, PPR OI referral laboratory network, one lab from IVRA Mukteshwar and from north side, from south side Nivedi. That is the second lab. They are recognized by the World uh, Organization for Animal Health. So coming to the clinical science, one by one, I want to tell because the new veterinarian, uh, those who are joined in the field recently, they may not get the, this, this type of lesion. So however, I want in acute case, uh, in, uh, incubation period from three to six days, fever will be there, serious nasal discharges, and it will be become again mucoprolent form and uh, prolent ocular discharges will come. So congestion, conjecture, you have to examine for that. Yeah, as of now, that only the uh, nasal discharge and ocular discharge with the pneumonia symptom is the clue. Uh, after that, it will go to prolent eye and uh, nose discharges. It will be congested mucoprolent because of the infection and bacterial infection. So it will block the nostrils and the dried up prolent discharges will come. So PPR in goat again, redness of the eye. So you can take the eye swab and it will be uh, sending to the laboratory for confirmation. And if you are seeing the oral ulcer, you can see the brand like deposit that is the erotic and necrotic stomatitis. So you can have the different type. If you are feeling it will come the blood. So this is because of the epitheliotropic uh, approach of the virus because it is propagating in the uh, from the lymphoid system to uh, digestive system epithelial form. So early mouth lesion showing the area of dead cells. So you have to be very careful. A brand like deposit and necrotic ulceration of this will be help you for differentiation of PPR from other diseases. That I will come for the differentiation of the infection. So if you are seeing the later uh, mouth lesion will be like the dryness and uh, membrane lining the mouth is completely obscured by the thick cheesy material 
So nodular lesion will form. This has to be differentiated from the box lesion, half lesion, that uh, nodular lesion around the mouth. Such nodules are common finding in the later stage of the PPR infection. That's why I told you, while uh, investigation of the outbreak in the form by the veterinarian, they have to see the different uh, animal, what is the status uh, with a different stage of, because the or not value of the virus is varies from different region. Uh, report if you are showing that uh, like COVID, you know, they will tell you one uh, today is one or not value is one, infective rate is one. When case is going to three lakhs, four lakhs, the R0 value is two. That is the capability of the one per infectant from one to other person. So here also the same issue. So sign of diarrhea, that is you can easily identify with uh, solid iron coatus or uh, liquid feces will be the common for most of that. If you are uh, taking the uh, swab, so it will be helpful for uh, detecting the virus. It is a necrospy lesion. So you can see the digestive, that is all intestinal inflammatory and necrotic uh, lesions in mouth and gastrointestinal tract erosion, mouth and abomatitis and uh, colon zebra marking. This is the colon zebra marking and this is the hemorrhages abomatitis. And if you are seeing that a lymph node, it will be very enlarged. This is a mesenteric lymph node. You have to cut and collect this one and send to that. It is a rich source of the virus. And uh, spleen, if you are seeing the slightly engorged and congested and respiratory erosion and fatigue will be the consolidated lung. These are the major uh, postmortem lesions. So if you are uh, seeing that uh, different uh, diagnosis from the PPR, there are the number of diseases uh, they are pointed out. Uh, so I don't want to individually discuss. So I will group this one into different form of the lesion. Suppose you are uh, analyzing the oral lesion, so you have to differentiate from sheep pox, goat pox, blue tongue, contagious acclima. If you are seeing the diarrhea, you have to do coccidosis, salmonosis, albinosis. As per the uh, group, uh, that is uh, which system affecting, accordingly you can differentiate the disease from other. Pastoralosis with the pneumonic symptom and contagious caprine fluoropneumonia and uh, some of the other maternal immunity distress and pastoralosis, coccidosis. So this will be useful. So what are the sample to be sent for laboratory already? I have discussed, but uh, here you see uh, swab will uncluttered blood, but uh, very careful, don't add glycerol and uh, transport under refrigeration. After collection, immediately you can send lymph nodes, spleen, lungs, intestine, ileocecal junction for the postmortem and antimortem sample, blood, clotted blood and swab. So we have to be either for PCR, we can use and uh, uh, serology purpose we can use and molecular detection by PCR. So these are the diagnostic uh, available currently in the country. So I already discussed a different type of this one. Standard referral test is the viral isolation in cell culture and RT-PCR for the molecular detection initially will be performing and the gold standard test is the viral. Uh, viral neutralization test, uh, other tests are commonly applied. All the tests will be available in the both referral laboratory. So this is the viral isolation in cell culture. For that, we are using Vero cell and B95A cell, uh, marmoset B lymphoid cell. So this uh, once infected, maybe after adaptation of four to five passages, the virus will show the very good uh, CP like rounding, syncytia, fusion of monolayer cells, thinning of monolayer and finally detachment from the cell. That is uh, six to seven days it will take. So these are the good photograph during the, our earlier work at Mukteshwar. We have taken clumping of the cells inside here in Mormos. This is the control one. So this is the detection of antibody that is competitive ELISA is commonly used from IBRI that was approved in the control and eradication program as uh, by Department of Animal Husbandry. So we'll be testing the sample throughout the country and the kit will be procured from the IBRA as of now. So this kit has sensitivity specificity of 92 and 98% with respect to virus neutralization test and it is a OI approved kit as well. So some of the field tests already developed by uh, TANUAS as well as the IVRI, but uh, it is in the not in the practical uh, commercial aspect, and, but it is used at the laboratory level to find uh, some of the people are already working for bringing to the farm level uh, at pen site level so that it will be diagnosed at the field level. 
so these are the kit developed at IC, IVR, icr nivedi so recently and we are still working that and uh, we have released this kit this kit have ng and antibody and sensitivity specificity with require to commercial uh, id weight kit around 95% Impact. If you are seeing the impact of this diagnostics availability, so we are knowing the status of the disease in the country, zero surveillance, prevalence of antibody in different states. We can identify, we have made the data, baseline data we have available, ELISA lab established and trained manpower created in the disease state disease department, as well as baseline data on endemic nature, prevalent of single virus only so far identified. So the single vaccine will be effective and uh, we are uh, saved a lot of the foreign uh, currency because of the import substitution of the kit. So this kit going to implement in the national control program as well as the eradication program. So some people want to have uh, treatment for the affected animal in PPR, but uh, generally there is no specific treatment for the disease. However, uh, that's why I told you based on the situation, uh, that symptom exhibited by the animal, we can decide the whether it is prognosis of the disease by the local veterinary and generally that uh, broad spectrum antibiotics, fluid therapy and anti-diarrheal medicine supportive therapy has to be followed. In some cases, passive immunization using vaccinated animal sera that will be protected. This method was regularly practiced in Bangladesh. So even some people vaccinated animal serum, they can store and they can use for the immunization for the animal infected so that recover will be very fast. So uh, that we have to we have to segregate the animal during the uh, outbreak investigation and the treatment should be separately given for the infected animals. And uh, non-infected animal, we can go for the vaccination based on the situation we can identify. So coming to the vaccine, uh, the commonly used vaccine in our country is the Sungri 96 strain, uh, that is the live attenuated PPR vaccine developed at the IVRA Mukteswar. That single dose uh, enough for the product, provide the protective immunity more than six years with uh, under, that is 1000 TCID 50. And uh, vaccine may be sufficient to protect the, that's why in the circulating uh, isolate or strain, because I already told it is uh, lineage four or prevalent in our country, even this vaccine uh, given the protection against lineage one that was tested at a different laboratory in the world, world reference laboratory. So our vaccine is can be used to control the disease caused by either lineage one or lineage four uh, only because of single serotype. And uh, this vac vaccine is uh, included in the national PPR control eradication strategy plan up to 2025. Maybe after that, we can think over of that uh, Diva vaccine that also it is processed in IVRA Mukteshwar. So generally this outbreak, we are what we observed in the field uh, may be reduced because of the effectiveness of the vaccine and uh, continuous timely vaccination of sheep and goat in some states and prevalent of the only single virus in the system. So after the eradication of the rinderpest, that is at, uh, June 2011, they are from the world, they are eradicated around one decades before. So they have planned for the FAO and OE, they planned for a possible eradication of PPR, the next disease. And they have planned 2017 to 2015, one five years plan. Again, they are going to release another plan, 22 to 27. So with the aim to eradicate the PPR from the world from 2020. So when you are seeing the elements in the disease control, uh, these are the important one. The animal census data is very important and migration pattern, basic data on the disease epidemiology, diagnostic test availability, suitable vaccine, diagnostic quality reagent available in the different laboratory, trained manpower, field infrastructure for mass vaccination, adequate funding from the government, commitment of the professional commitment of the veterinarian and different stakeholders, political commitment from the government, administrative government from the state. So public and social support, all these are the must. We have almost have 97 to eight. This is the last nine and 10 to be committed. We can eradicate the disease from the country. So if you are seeing the availability of the vaccine, there are different vaccine companies there in India. So they are private organization, Indian Immunological, Ester Bioscience, Biomed Private Limited, Brilliant Biopharma. These are the companies they are 
MNC company, they are producing the our vaccine that is Sundri approved by the government of India. Some of the state government also producing like Karnataka, Telangana and uh, Kerala, they are producing this vaccine for the use in the country. So any success of control program depend uh, mainly on understanding the social, economic and cultural assumptions of the farmers and the endemic nature of the neighboring countries is very important. So if you are going for the eradication, we should take care of the neighboring country also. Coordinated effect of different stakeholder, proper funding and execution of the program is very important. So you see if you have why PPR control or not other diseases. So it is easy because of the so many reasons. One is single serotype virus is prevalent as I informed earlier. Prevalent of single lineage also, so that is a matter, not a matter for us, but still only one Asian lineage is uh, circulating in country. So vaccine will be covered by all the isolates from different region. Long-term immunity, one vaccine is enough. Diagnostic technique useful, availability, so screening, zero monitoring, zero surveillance is possible. Transmission level of PPR virus. You see why I has already told, close contact is very much important for transmission as well as that based on the liability of the virus in the environment. So because the virus want to survive in the environment, the close contact of the animal very important. So the highly antigenicity of the virus as well as the stability of the virus. So these all factors help to control the disease. So if you are seeing the major strength for India element in disease control program, we already have the strength uh, that is suitable vaccine. I discussed suitable diagnostics for clinical survey as well as serological survey. Baseline data we have established from Nivedi total and trained manpower already established during the diagnostic uh, development stage. Now the strategic vaccination feasibility that we are applying in the control program and eradication program in order to control and eradicate the disease. So strategy may vary from different uh, diseases, country, based on the prevalence of the disease. Uh, for India is considering it, uh, no stamping out is policy is not possible. So we have to see the social acceptance of the feasible technique that is the vaccination program. So vaccination is the recommended pro tool to support control and eradication. We cannot go for other method. So that uh, so once control is mainly depend upon the implementation of the vaccination program, accurate diagnosis test and surveillance monitoring, then eradication is possible. So if you are seeing the strategies, we can do different strategy based on the requirement. Earlier, they have done the focused vaccination in highly risk group. You can, whenever the outbreak is happening, they can do there, or they can target the only young animal in that particular area to protect the disease, or vaccination in suitable period, I was told before the uh, uh, lean period, that is the period where they will animal will migrate or uh, they will search out the water and uh, they will spread the disease. So our outbreak places we can view for. This is a ring vaccination. We, we have practiced from 2002 onwards. And still some places people are practicing even for the, uh, now we are recommending also to, in the vaccination uh, program implemented states whenever sporadic outbreak is happening around the ring vaccination has to be practiced from the radius of two to three kilometers. So intensive vaccination again is based on the population to make zone free area. Suppose you are targeting for Andaman or Lakshadiv where the small population is there having the infection, example, Sikkim, very difficult area, Himachal Pradesh. Uh, particular migrating uh, population. So we can target that and make the uh, disease-free zone. And uh, last strategy is the mass vaccination strategy, like uh, covering the 80% of the target population. So you can get the population immunity, immunity of more than 80% to achieve the uh, herd immunity. So that is the strategy we are following in the control program because it is other strategy are difficult. Uh, for the country, you are having a more than 225 million population of small ruminant. So this uh, strategy they followed in a control program. You see, uh, with the initially 2010, government of India started with around uh, 43 crores uh, in the southern part of the country. Before that, 2002, that uh, vaccination that is during the outbreak, we have uh, practices. 
Uh, this I have discussed. This is the first phase. Uh, these are the states and the union territory are covered. So only this is the targeted population states, but uh, actually vaccination happened in more maximum uh, in this uh, state only. Karnataka, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, and Chhattisgarh. Because of the impact of uh, vaccination, again the government have suggested to all the state to undergo the 2014 to 15 with the funding facilities like 60-40 sharing basis between central and state. In northeastern and three Himalayan states, they are given 90%, 10% and 100% funding strategy for union territory. So in this program, we have used the OI strategy, mass vaccination program, that is intensive vaccination of entire population within a specified period first and the subsequent vaccination on only younger animal four to five month age of animal, they are vaccinated after that with a two round of, with the six month interval. This strategy was followed in Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh sir, followed. And after three years, again, a vaccination of the entire population because that population, what every year we are replaced with one third population. So we have to cover that. So they have planned this way, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka and as well as Telangana. So this strategy is proposed in the control program in, in, involving intensive vaccination of all the susceptible sheep and goat and subsequent three generation has to go that. This was there earlier they used from 2011 to 2019. So if you are seeing the impact of this, uh, you see Karnataka state the vaccination versus uh, outbreak. It is a drastically reduced the outbreak. Now even now, Karnataka as well as Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. These are the example. So vaccination continued for every six month interval as I told in Karnataka. So they are ring vaccination also they are followed whenever there is an outbreak happened. So if you are seeing the UC, the impact what you are observed based on the vaccination is that this is the status of 95 to 2010. Now you see the status of uh, this 19 to 20. Only three districts is happened. Very easy to control. The problem here is only Karnataka and uh, Andhra is uh, uh, doing vaccination. Other state, if we are not doing, so continuously their resource is wasteful. That's why the uh, Andhra, Andhra Pradesh is doing the vaccination since 2002. But Karnataka doing 2002 also. In Chhattisgarh, they are started vaccination 2014. You see, because of uh, others, they are not do other states not doing because in our country, state is a uh, subject matter, individual state have their own restriction. So other state, if you are not started, the one state continuously doing the vaccination, the resource may not be much useful. So that's why the country has planned overall program for the uh, subsequent year in the eradication mode. So this is the model they have used, a pulse polio model, that is PPR mass vaccination campaign by Chhattisgarh state in the different program since 2010. Yeah, they are doing every year vaccination covering more than 85% population. So no outbreak reported since 30. So this is the good model. And so the same model we have also implemented for the eradication every year, all the population has to be vaccinated. So if you are seeing that the other states are different states like uh, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, you can very clearly point out that this is a reported outbreak come down. Now you see the Maharashtra again is still effort is less because we are some of outbreak are reporting. It may be due to the non-reporting also, but it's a general picture showing that uh, it is uh, due to the impact of the vaccination. In overall impact of vaccination in the country level, if you are seeing that uh, drastically from a 200, 300 outbreak from during uh, 9 and 10, now it is coming to the uh, few numbers only outbreak, oddly 10, 20 or 15 outbreaks uh, major, but the involvement of the uh, animal also less, mortality also less, that I will come why the, not only the outbreak number, we cannot see the number of the outbreak. What is the impact we have to see? How many animals affected? How many cases there? How many they are recovering back? Uh, that is the importance. So some of the field problem, if you are seeing that uh, veterinarian, there may be unvaccinated population will be there because of new population one. And especially the movement of animal in, in and around the district, 
that uh, migratory population, nomad population is there. So that all very difficult. And some farmer insisting the repeated vaccination for earlier vaccinated animal in the earlier program. So these all we are taken into consideration and that's why the mass uh, carpet vaccination program we have uh, proposed in the 2019 and all the animal has to be vaccinated every year. And identification of the vaccinated animal is very, very difficult. Traceability and tractability of the animal is difficult, but some people also plan, some state they are planning for the tagging of animal. It is not required. It is much costlier than the vaccination. So cold vaccine chain maintenance for the storage of vaccine. This is the very difficult wastage of vaccine in the field due to large number of dose. Again, we have spoken to the vaccine producer so they will come up with uh, 50 doses also in the wild during the very less population region they can use that type of quantity and outbreak uh, that is uh, marketing places we can target for vaccination because there the people are animals are coming together so the migratory animal that is also we are included in the strategy vaccination so these are the uh, uh, surveillance we have undertaken to know the status of the disease in the country uh, or immunity level uh, after the implementation of the vaccination during 2017 and 18. We have collected more than 25,000 samples from different part of the country from uh, sheep and goat as per the strategic sampling planning technique. And except some of the state, one Jargon, uh, the Arunachal Pradesh and some union territories, most of the state uh, we have collected sample. The dark green color is indicating the population immunity of more than 50%. That means the, uh, there is a chance of getting an outbreak will be very less compared to the uh, non-vaccinated area. That is the another light green color. So we are targeting now that each state should have more than 55 to 60% of population of immune, then automatically that we can control the disease and eradicate the disease in the subsequent year. That was the, our plan. And as per the plan, we have proposed that. So we can observe the veterinarian nowadays, those who are uh, joined newly. Uh, so they have to take care of that the PPR, what I have discussed the earlier symptom may not be exhibited by the animal during this time because the changing pattern of the disease, that is a typical form of the disease. We might have observed corona symptom earlier we have seen, now we can see the corona symptom because the population is vaccinated. So similar situation in case of animal. Uh, respiratory distress, that's why small, uh, little bit cough and uh, dyspnea and sneezing only will be able to observe while investigating the farm. Nasal discharges, only predominant sign in the flock. That's only will be there. You cannot expect even for oral reason also. But some cases, diarrhea. You can observe the mortality. What I told you, 3D, here it may not be that much. Only less than 5 to 10 percent. Suppose 10 animal is there, even one animal also may not be died in that farm. So it is good sign good sign of the uh, vaccination. One or more uh, few cases, uh, only necrotic ulcer we can observe. So the recovery data are much, much more uh, high compared to the earlier stage. So the recovery also very fine. So we have to be very careful that you cannot have the very, you see the least and what I showed earlier, it is very less. Uh, you cannot able only one few animal will have that also very uh, young one, uh, six month old to one. So this is the animal having no, no symptom of anything, just this. After diet, we are done the postmortem. So you see the very uh, typical form of the left, uh, this one, TPR. So this is the mild form of the disease. This will create problem in the case of uh, declaration of freedom from disease. So we are planned in that uh, syndromic surveillance through the survey instrument tool. We are, we are prepared that we'll be asking the, all the veterinarian whether you are... Uh, got the symptom like this uh, in, uh, in your uh, places, uh, typical sign of the symptom through. So before going to the laboratory, we are able to find out the case at the field level. That is why the syndromic surveillance will do. In the eradicate space, like our uh, small uh, fox, most of the seniors may be aware of that. Uh, during the 2019-80, so people, those who are uh, having the symptom of smallpox, they will be given with the intensive of a thousand rupees. Those who are showing that, they will give some amount. So people will, will be aware that. So they will bring the animal to the farmers, uh, this uh, uh, human, they will bring the 
case to the adopter. So similar way, we have to think of for the during the eradication phase, those who are animal uh, having the symptom of a mild character of PPR, they have to bring to the veterinary doctor so that reporting will be very much useful. This point also we have included in the strategy plan. So contingency plan, what you are doing, once you are observed outbreak, what do you have to do with the veterinarian? So you have to report the outbreak to the higher authority, stick quarantine measure, biosecurity form you have to make, and mass immunization, you have to follow that focus vaccination radius up to three kilometer and decontamination, proper disposal as equal other important and infected and suspected flock must be placed under quarantine. So you have to make alert of the other flock. So it may not be spread much one because some people, uh, some flock might have be vaccinated, only the unvaccinated population, it will come from the unvaccinated region. So if you are seeing that PPR uh, global control eradication uh, strategy plan of the uh, World Health, uh, World Organization of Animal Health. Uh, so there are four stages they have given in that India is in the final stage of the stage two. That is the later stage we can call it as now we are entering to the eradication stage. For that uh, national strategic plan we made and uh, only 100% assistance from the central because the problem earlier I told you, different uh, money issue and release of uh, fund during the particular time it is affecting. So under the NADCP program, they are uh, planned this strategy and uh, only we need is regional coordination from all the states and harmonization of national strategy plan and involvement of different stakeholders, including the veterinarian for achieving this goal. They have to work very honestly, then only we can achieve this stage. Otherwise, very difficult. The plan consists is the same uh, World Organization Animal Health Pathway, mass vaccination, zero monitoring, surveillance, cessation of vaccination after three to four years, then declaring country is provisionally. Very easy, five years we can complete, but unless otherwise other total stay, all the stakeholder has to take into the confident. That is a very much important. So here pulse vaccination, we, will, we can go in that program, more than 70 to 80% immunity to achieve that. And intensive vaccination for 100% coverage for all the sheep till 2025. Stoppage of vaccination, then we'll be declaring based on the situation or we have to modify the strategy. Again, we have to go for the intensive vaccination program. So this is the program, the highlight of the program. So I also commit my government already committed, funds availability ready, required logistic framework already framed and epidemiology data available, indigenous diagnostic kits, vaccine available, production capacity also vaccine have made availability, made available and existence of large frame network also made, well equipped diagnostic laboratory established, veterinary service committed, and this is very important, trying to qualify manpower for vaccination and planning implementation and execution of activity is very important. So for this strategy that from the ICR, we are uh, the IVRA as well as Nivedi and from state uh, department or department of animal husbandry, that is a uh, National Institute of Animal Health, Bhagpat will be play a major role. IVRA will provide a diagnostic diagnosis aspect, Nivedi zero monitoring surveillance strategy will be take up Capacity building for uh, veterinarian will be giving from IVRA as well as Nivedi and impact assessment also will be cal calculated in the program. Vaccine testing in IVRA and other state proficiency. So this program generally containing live attenuated vaccine for uh, use for the program, more than four month old animal will be vaccinated and uh, it will provide six, uh, three to six years. That is the general commercial lifeline of uh, immunity in sheep and goat. Generally, normally farmer will have maximum three years uh, for the animal. Uh, model is pulse polio model. You see that particular pulse, pulse polio model means the vaccination they will do only two days. Example, polio, they are covering or three days. In the case of animal, we have to fix that some period like one week or two weeks or five weeks based on the population density in the particular state. So they have to complete during that period every year. That is the pulse polar model and uh, strategy used to mass vaccination. So we can include in that mass vaccination time, animal market, check post everywhere. 
so that we can cover like bus stand people are covering for the human polio vaccine like that we have to cover finally vaccination will be restricted once it is attaining population level around 70% to 80% it will be restricted to only to the neighboring place border places especially international border otherwise other state borders so this again action plan we have proposed so now the program with all the sample they will be submitting to nivedi and we'll be screening the sample for a time being one or two years followed by the decentralizing testing at a state level so every uh, this the every year we'll be assessing the population immunity and outbreak investigation we'll be giving we have to monitor and syndromic surveillance and surveillance in other host that is the after four years we'll be taking into the including especially in camel and other uh, large ruminant will be taking into the consideration so if you are analyzing this report there is strength we have in all the what i have discussed and weakness is the movement animal borders uh, reporting disease mechanism vaccine coverage in the particular time these are the weakness what we are having we have to make this weakness to be strength so we have to use this opportunity and uh, we can uh, avoid the threat to the uh, population so opportunity the food security and safety our production will be much higher and uh, doubling farmer income as the part of this program also so this is free status is a very much uh, difficult threat unless you are we making the weakness to strength and using this opportunity we cannot avoid this so I, I mostly i completed my presentation but this is the recent one i would like to another 10 minutes i will take for the sampling plan because most of the states they are writing to us to give the strategic framework for zero monitoring especially for karnataka and madhya pradesh we have received the letter so the state just briefly i will tell you uh, sampling plan we are prepared and given to dhd so they will forward to you each state uh, as per their so generally your uh, zero monitoring sampling plan will be from your state uh, we'll be collecting around 108 villages uh, that is the village will be giving uh, village name and uh, from there each village it is best to collect around 30 sample minimum of 27 samples so from the each village that uh, veterinarian has to select uh, that three to four flocks which is having a uh, uh, 15 to 20 animal if not having the flock much is no issue randomly you can collect a maximum 27 sample they will give the number but how many has to be collected from a sheep how many has to be collected from the goat so generally if you are collecting the sample three sample from example first nine sample uh, out of 27 nine sample will be in each category that is below 12 month each category and about 12 month and uh, uh, about two one or two years that we will be discussing in the subsequent slide so this is the maximum uh, 27 sample 108 villages so you will be collecting only 3000 samples per year uh, after the vaccination we'll be giving the which time exactly after vaccination we have to collect it that also will be detailed discussing during our training program so the sampling frame what we'll be giving like the district name and block name and village name we'll be writing here goat population sheep population example goat population six number sheep population four number so if you are going for pre-vaccination sample that is zero surveillance we have to collect a goat six we are given so six into three, 18 sample from goat that will a sheep 12 sample you have to collect. Very simple, but we'll be in uh, detail. Uh, we'll discuss uh, those who are participating in that uh, program. So these are the general. So if you are po post vaccination sampling plan, what we are giving is a five animal goat example, sheep again, five animal. As such only you have to collect only from the six to 12 month old animal. That, uh, after the vaccination from 60 days to within 90 days. This is very crucial. So that will be explaining. That is the first vaccination, zero monitoring. So what is the purpose of zero monitoring here? We are making the efficiency. We are analyzing the efficacy of the vaccine at the field level, each state, because you might have used different batches of the vaccine. So we'll be giving the feedback based on the your data. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So these are the surveillance you know, monitoring plan for each year we planned. So another five years we'll be continuing that. So we'll be informing for population immunity, what, what will be the sampling plan for zero surveillance, what will be the sampling plan for zero monitoring, what will be the sampling plan. So after analyzing everything, we'll review the plan for the after the four week, uh, fourth year. So this I discussed syndromic surveillance and other host, so not required. So we'll also providing the training modules for sample collection, transportation, preservation, and dispatch, as well as we'll give the training to participate in the program, outbreak investigation, syndromic surveillance, response, et cetera. And especially for the disease dynamics and the changing pattern of the disease. The format, what will simple format be made easy for the each animal you have to fill, not each animal, one sheet for the one village, 27 sample, you have to write this all will be fixed, only you have to take the breed and check the age of the animal and what the sample you are sending. So once the sample you are given to the state level or directly we can be sent to us, so that, that will be decided by the Department of Animal Husbandry. Accordingly, we'll be these are the plan we have proposed to the department. So we'll have the centralized data for all the things for the coming five years so that we can report the data to the uh, government of India. In turn, they will be report to the uh, World Organization. So general that transport procedures already we have in the regular one, only ice we have to send it. So with this, I will conclude uh, my presentation on uh, PPR. It is important constraint to put security and livelihood of poor farmer. That is why very important. This is a small dominant disease. Existing knowledge, experience and technology provide a solid platform for embarking on program for pro progressive control of the disease across India that I have discussed already. Zero survey study revealed that production level immune population more 55 in the regularly mass vaccinated problem and outbreak also reduced. So the coordination effect to control PPR will add value to current investment to mitigate the epidemics and activity seeking to promote food security. So the turnover of a small ruminant, that is every year that is one around 25 to 30 percent around one third of population is replace, replacing with the new one. So the vaccination has to be carried out intensively to eradicate the disease. We have already controlled, but eradication you have to intensive vaccination required for that support of veterinarian is very, very must and professional commitment is very important for the veterinarian along with the other stakeholder so that we can achieve the population immunity of 70% because we cannot see that population immunity of 70 percent because if we are reaching 50 to 55 to 60 percent because we are testing the only the animal from six month to two two years so we are leaving the below six month animal that also will have the maternal immunity if you are taking into consideration you are 60 plus uh, 55 plus 30 so it will be around 85 percent population immunity what the OI is recommended is only 70, so we can easily achieve that. So major thing is regional coordination and harmonization of national strategy and involvement of all the state stakeholders are very much important. So what we learned today is the, for success of control and eradication program, professional commitment on the part of veterinarian and the other stakeholders are very important. So it is hoped that PPR in the direction of Rinderpest will be eradicated by joining the hands of different stakeholders under the program. So we have, I was discussed about what is PPR, status of PPR, how it is transmitting, what is the epidemiological factor involved, how can be diagnosed, how can be controlled, and what is the vaccination strategy, and what are the strategy of control method and eradication strategy I discussed. So if you are way forward in this is uh, the element, different technical working group has to be created in each state or central or district level. That is the very, very important. That also included in the program, diagnostic strategy group, surveillance strategy group, disease prevention and control group, and legal framework and involvement of different stakeholders. So very much important, as I discussed, co regional coordination very much that is to eradicate the disease. So future perspective, I told you Diva vaccine, already people are working and replacing the uh, live virus for the future and detailed epidemiological data for uh, disease epidemiology in different species. Apart from sheep and goat, we have to take care of the 
uh, wild ruminants as well as camel, cattle, etc. And uh, the, the referral laboratory, that is collaboration is very important with the state laboratory and uh, development of more rapid test at the field level, pen site test is important and socio-economical analysis. <laughs>